Welcome, welcome to this week's live stream broadcast where we're going to cover two mistakes that parents commonly make when they are feeling stressed and don't realize that it's going to create even more stress because it's going to stress your kid out. So these are two things that I see quite um, quite frequently that parents out there are doing that actually break the connection you have with your kids. And we're going to go over what those are. So you know not to do them. You know how to, uh, these are things that you want to avoid. It will also raise your awareness. If this is something you're doing, it's going to point out to you that, um, that, oh my gosh, I'm leaning on this coping skill. And it's really, this must be the reason why my kid is melting down, or this must be the reason why they're saying, I hate you and storming out of the room or whatever it is. So I want to just go on a little, a little journey with you here for a moment. And we're going to start with, I want you to think of a time when you said something to your kid or you did something that you wish you could take back. You'd give anything to rewind the clock and not say the hurtful thing that you said or snap at your kid like you did. And you did it because you were stressed. You did it because you didn't know what else to do. You did it because your parents did that to you. And it just is automatic and it comes out of you. It's conditioning, right? It's not because you wanted to do that. It wasn't intentional. But what happened when your kid pushed you or when your day pushed you or things got hard was something that you don't want to be. So raise your hand if this is something that you've experienced and you can think of a time right now when you said something or did something that is not who you want to be. And just say, share a yes, or click the like button around this video if that's happened to you. Yeah, raise your hand. Like it's happened to all of us. Let's be honest. It's happened to all of us. We've all had moments where we're being someone we don't want to be. And then what happens next? You guys know. What happens when you say or do something you, you don't want to do? There's a ripple effect. There's always a ripple effect. And so... When I was inviting you to this talk, I shared with you a little snapshot of my past with my, I have two daughters, with my daughters when they were younger, still happens now, still happens now. I'm really observant person, so I can see when this is going on with them. When they were young, though, it was really in your face. So I'm guessing that you guys are going to be able to, um, to see that this is happening in your life too. When you are having a tough day, when you're in a low place, when you're in a bad mood, and then you're with your kids, you pick them up for school or, you know, you had a rough morning and they're around for the day. What happens to their mood? So I shared with you guys that my girls, when they were younger, and it's still true today, but when they were little before they had their own kind of regulatory system, they were little lightning rods for my nervous system. They were this perfect little extension of what I was feeling inside of me. So if I had a tough day, a lot of pressure, a tough client at work, whatever it was, they seemed to reflect that stress to me. They felt it in their bodies. They acted it out to each other. They fought with each other. When I was grounded, happy, and like minding my P's and Q's, I did my work that day. I did my practice. My thoughts were on point. My emotions were on point. I'm doing, I'm walking the walk. I'm walking the talk. They were calm. They were happy. They laughed more. They were more generous and forgiving of each other and of me. So all three of us, when we were together, had more cooperation, more flow, more fun, more laughter, more creativity, more play. And it was just a lot more relaxed. And I'm painting this picture for you because I want you to understand parents fall, in, fall into the trap all the time of not realizing that their mood is affecting their children and then seeing their kids filled with all this negativity and they think it's about the kid. And I'm here to tell you that it comes from us as parents. And I'll be the first standing in line to own that. I own it with my kids all the time. Two huge mistakes that parents make are thinking that the problem is your kid. Oh boy, it's easy, isn't it? To just pin it on them. It's easy. So that brings us to the two parenting mistakes that happen 
that then break that connection you have with your kids. So if you're walking around with this idea that they're the cause of your stress, your my kids cause me so much stress. There's a problem with that. There's a problem with that. And here, here I'm going to describe to you what it does. So two mistakes parents make that will break the connection you have with your kids in any given moment. And when you're stressed, it will result in them being stressed. The first one, the first coping strategy, it's it's not it's not mindful. It's not intentional. But the first thing that most people do is they try to pretend they're not stressed. If you're a gentle mom, if you're if you're really in tune with your kids, you're maybe a highly sensitive person or you're an empath, you might go this route. You might try to pretend that you're not feeling what you're feeling. You want to be this kind of mom. So you're really trying to be this kind of mom and you don't even want to acknowledge or let in that you are irritated or tired or exhausted or maybe you gave more than you wanted to give and you're annoyed with them and you don't want them to know. Here's the truth of this one. If you are pretending you're not stressed with your kids, they already know. They already know. It's so much better to name what's going on for you and to acknowledge that first for you, then for them. And then tell them that you're going to be okay. We'll go more into strategy and solution in a moment. But number one is they already know what's better. It's better to just call the spade a spade. Pretending you're not stressed is only going to cause confusion for them and stress for both of you. Got it? So tell me if this is making sense. Hit the like button. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know. I'm not able to see your comments now for some reason, but I will check back. I'll check back and look at them. Okay, so now that we've got that one, um, we're gonna go into the second mistake that parents make. And this one is a big one and nobody wants to admit it. Nobody wants to admit it, including me, but I'll go first and say, of course I've done this because we've all done it. The second thing parents do that breaks the connection with their kids is we blame it on their behavior. We blame the fact that we yelled. We blame the fact that we're irritated, frustrated, stressed out, angry at them on their behavior. We say it's your fault. We say it with our actions or with our mood or with our words. We say it's your fault. We say, if you didn't do that, I wouldn't be like this. If you didn't do that, I wouldn't have to do this. We say, you're the reason why I'm so tired and stressed out. My husband is away traveling for work right now. And at the end of the school year, so it's a little bit of a, a tricky time to juggle my business, my clients, my team, and uh, my schedule, my calendar, and my children who are so important to me. And I've made an agreement and commitment with myself, my soul, that they always come first, that my care and concern for them is bigger than anything else. And also I have a lot of integrity in what I do. So I really care about my team and the business and, and the way that I serve and the way that I show up. So, and right now, you know, just doing, running the company, being a solo parent and holding both of those and balancing both of those, it would be very easy for me when some surprise pops up or a call on my calendar, I forgot was there comes up. And I have to make a decision in that moment about where I'm going to give attention, about how I'm going to do that. It'd be really easy for me to blame the fact that my husband's out of town, to blame my kids for having big emotional needs in a moment when I've got other work going on. It would be easy for me to blame a circumstance or their behavior or their need their, them for having needs. We do it all the time. We do it when we don't tend to our needs. We blame them for having needs. It's like a really low key kind of jealousy thing. People do it all the time. And it may sound crazy. So if you're not aware that you have this pattern going on or that you blame your kids for things, that may sound like mean or awful or crazy, but I promise you it's happening. We've all done it and it's super lame. It's really lame. I'm not proud to talk about the fact that this happens, but what I wanna say is that there is a better way. There is a much better way because if you go that route, immediately you're gonna shut down the connection you have with your kids. 
If you pretend you're not stressed and they know you are, you're lying to them. You're misrepresenting reality and the truth to them, which is in form of betrayal, a broken trust. And two, if you're blaming your mood or yelling or what have you, your behavior on their behavior, you're going to shut them down. They're going to go, I'm out, especially teenagers. Like, I hate you. Forget it. Forget you. You're not earning my trust and my respect right now. And you know, it's valid. It's valid. Kids aren't little, our little minions. They aren't our little robots. They don't have less power than we have. They're, they are in their own power and we need to own ours as well. So look, I know it's so hard to manage your own big feelings and theirs at the same time to do your work, a lot of you probably working full time or more. You've got kids you're the lead parent for. You want to be totally present with when you're with them and give them that like deep listening, that undivided attention so that they feel and know you care, so that you want to spend time with them. They feel that my mom wants to be with me. My mom wants to spend time with me. And we already have a lot going on. A lot of plates are still spinning. They don't stop spinning just because we decide to be present with our kids. However, if that is your intention to be present with your kids, then your, your skill set has to match. And some of you, many of you, I know I've worked with through the workshops and things, you have a desire to be an intentional into mom and to really live from your heart, heart-based motherhood. And at the same time, you haven't developed the skills to be able to deliver that experience for yourself and your kids. So when there's a skill gap, it does not mean you are a bad person. It does not mean your mom was a bad person. It just means you're lacking the skills. That's all it means. So you can take that guilt and set it aside for a second and just go like, what, what we do on the motherhood inventory call, I'm offering a new free offer, which is super fun to get on the phone with you guys, have lots of chats like this, 15 minutes. I have a, um, a process for you called the motherhood inventory, where we look through kind of three different buckets or categories of your relationship, your health and your parenting. And we go, where's the gap? So what's not working? Then we look through those, where's the gap? And I will identify the gap with you and for you. Once we put our finger on what that is, I can say, this is the skill set you need. Here's where you need to develop. Here's what's missing. And then if I have ideas about how you could develop that, or you want to ask me that, that's fine. We can do that too, if there's some time left. But this is an amazing free offer. I want to invite all of you into, and the link is around this video, by the way, um, get on my calendar. Summer is hectic. Summer is intense. Get the information you need before you go into summer and juggling and hanging out with your kids so much. So for anybody, for all of us, for humans, it's hard to manage big feelings, your own and theirs at the same time. It takes a whole new set of skills. And you know what? They don't come with motherhood. They just don't. They don't come with the birth of your child. They are skills you have to actually learn. You have to actually learn. And so if you are going to therapy and like, why am I still struggling? It's because therapy isn't a teaching science. It's a connection-based science. So it, it's, a, it's a, pro, a place to process, talk through what's not working. Therapy is about gaining understanding and insight, which sometimes is all people want. But it isn't to teach, it doesn't teach you, you how to develop a certain skill set. It also lacks any structure, any accountability, and any community. So it's processing in a vacuum. And, and for a lot of you here, that will never work. That's why you get so frustrated going year after year after year to process. DBT and EMDR will also not teach you to develop this skill set of attunement and managing feelings and emotions. This is a skill set I teach in all of my programs, and there's a really clear reason why. You know, after, after 12, 13 years of working with families, working with moms, one of the things that, that I became frustrated with was that I couldn't help people make 
marked progress, faster progress that was tangible and concrete for them. And that became frustrating that people want, needed to keep coming to therapy after a year. But something is not working about the system, which is when I developed the first of my programs, Awaken Motherhood. And so I found through that, we need, you need homework. You need face-to-face -face reflection and coaching. You need outcomes-focused goals. And you need a structure and the accountability and move you from point A to point B to point C to point D until you get to your outcome. And that is the model that gets people results. And so instead of doing the conditioned things or the things your parents did to you, blaming the kids, passive aggressiveness, yelling, whatever it is, avoidance, withdrawal, those are not productive ways of creating strong, connected relationship and trust with your kids. And believe me, by the time they get to 11 and beyond, you're going to need it. You're going to want it. You're going to want that and need that in the bank to draw from as they move from there to 18 and beyond. You're going to want them to feel safe to come and tell you things. You're going to want to know that you're in and they're letting you in. And they're going to need to know that you're on their team and that you're supporting them. So here's what to do instead. If you guys have questions, drop them in the chat and we'll circle back. I'm so sorry, I can't see your comments right now, but I'm here for you and I will answer them. So instead of doing those modes, here's what having the skill set that I'm describing enables parents to do. I'm not suggesting you could do this without the skill set. You may try, but you're going to get some feedback when you do that tells you if you know how to do it or not. So you can test this and see the number one thing that you do want to do when you're stressed and you're in an interaction with your kids and you can feel it and you don't know what to do because there's a lot of uncertainty when you don't have the skill set. There's, there's uncertainty, there's lack of confidence, there's a lot of energetic wobbles and kind of stress spills over through the cracks. The first thing that will help you guys is to come clean when you know how to regulate your emotions and find your center and your kid is off and you're super stressed, you would know how to name and acknowledge, I'm feeling really stressed right now. You name it, it may sound like, I've had a lot going on today. Work was crazy. I'm feeling really stressed right now. And it's because I care so much. I care so much and I want things to go so well. Okay, I acknowledged it. I said what it was. I named it. Now, what enables me to do that and someone else to not be able to do that? Well, I have a solid, well-developed set of self-regulation skills. I also have developed the communication to be able to name it, acknowledge it, and I've practiced the communication. These are all elements of awakened motherhood. I've practiced the communication to be able to deliver that to my kids without losing connection with them. I know how to own it. I know how to, I know how to, step one is, is come clean, name it, acknowledge it, say it out loud. Then step two has to follow that. And it's energetically like really own it. Take responsibility for what's yours in front of your kids. Don't just let them think that they are the reason. Don't assume that they know that you know that you are the cause of your own frustration or your own irritation. And what I say when I mean you're the cause is I have a, like, I'm coming from a teaching that says I live at cause for my own uh, fulfillment, my own satisfaction in my life. I don't wait for someone else to give that to me because I know it. no one can give to me my own fulfillment. That's mine. That's between me and God. That's part of my spiritual path. I take responsibility then for that. So that comes up in parenting too. If my kids are spinning out, if they're, they had a bad day, so they yell at me and I know it's not about me. How do I know that? Because I have a really strong skill set that enables me to stay in my own lane energetically, not get tangled in what's theirs because I know it's not mine. Talk for another day but that's a part of what I teach in Awakened Motherhood. I know what's mine. So I'm able then on a dime to go, hey, you know what? I'm so sorry that I just snapped at you. That was not fair. My stress is causing me to feel irritable, 
and frustrated and I'm not taking care of myself because I've been speeding all day or whatever it is. And you know what? It's not your fault. That is not your fault. And you did not create that. It's mine to deal with and I'm working on it. Can you forgive me? That is what it sounds like when someone is embodied and empowered as a parent. So is this making sense? And what questions do you have for me about this? What I wanna hear, I wanna hear your questions that can support you, but I also wanna hear that you're able to start identifying some of your gaps. Let's move you forward. If you're like, I'm spinning wheels in this, I know these things up here, but they're not, they're not integrated into who I'm being as a mom, then let's find out what the gap is. The next step is I'm gonna invite you to a motherhood inventory call, free 15 minute call. The link is on my calendar. Get on the phone with me and let's find out what is getting in your way and holding you back and causing you to keep repeating these old patterns. And it could be one of many things. And I'll know 20 years of experience for helping people through this, I'll be able to help you and identify right away Where's the gap? What's the thing for you to build skills in? And it may be connection. It may be communication. It may be uh, regulating your own emotions, or it may be being a highly sensitive person. I don't know how to parent my highly spirited kid. There are a lot of different things that could be going on, but I want you to not be afraid and hang out and lurk and stay in the dark corners of this group. We've got what, six, 8,000 something members in this group. And I know, I know that so many of you need help and just don't ask. Why don't you ask? Because you got a lot going on. Because you don't know how to ask. Because you're afraid there's some trick or something. I've seen all the things. And what I will assure you is that if you and I get on the phone for a chat for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I will be able to identify for you where the gap is and point you toward either your next step or a free offer, a resource, or maybe you're actually ready to do some work. Maybe you want to do some deeper work or you've been to therapy for years and it's not working for you, but I will. And then if that is the case, then I can connect you with some ideas. What might be something you want to start thinking about now? Um, there is zero obligation and zero pressure. I'm offering this from the heart. I really want to help you guys. So um, it's my dream and desire for all moms to know that they are the perfect mom for their kids. And I really want you to know that. And I know a lot of people don't see it. And a lot of people have, have thoughts that say otherwise. Because you don't know how to read the communication with your kids. And this is something that um, that is one of my gifts. I can see where the break in the connection is between people and their kids. I don't even have to see your kid to know it. I can just hear you talking about it and I can know it and then help you to pivot to know how to have that incredible trust with your kids. No one can do it like you can. No one can do that. You are the only mom for your kids who can do that. So I want you from that love for them, from that desire, for the closeness and connection and trust with your kids that lasts the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years. I want you to take action from that space to help them and to help yourself so you can be the mom they need. All right. I want you right now to drop in the chat. What is your Next action step. Are you going to book a 15 minute motherhood inventory call with me? Say yes if it's that. Are you going to try to stop doing those two parenting mistakes and pitfalls? Say I'm going to stop making the mistakes in the chat. Or are you going to try and do one of those two things that I talked about that are part of the solution? that once you've developed and built those skills, and some of you on this call today have developed and built those skills already, you know how to use them. That's your superpower now. Are you gonna practice those more? Owning it, naming what's going on for you, knowing it's yours, not theirs, and then taking responsibility and really finding the words to speak from your heart to your kids and say, I am so sorry, this is mine. I had a rough day. It's not your fault and you didn't create it. And I love you so much. And can you please forgive me? 
So I know from having clarity calls with so many of you that you're so swamped in guilt that you're so overwhelmed by the emotion, you could never find those words. You just can't, or you do, and it feels like you're being a fraud, you're faking it. I can diagnose right now without us being on the call. The problem is you don't know how to process through your emotions and you need to be able to do that quickly to maintain a connection with your kid. If you are getting lost in your own overwhelm of emotions, they're too big, you're feeling lost in that, or you feel so raw and vulnerable, you can't like, um, you can't hang on to your center, your, your clarity and communicate with your kids from that, then the problem is a lack of skills in your regulatory system. Your nervous system, your emotions, and your thoughts are probably also on board with making this hard. And you know what? It doesn't have to be hard. If you were to say yes to developing the skills that you need, you can save yourself the next 10 years that you have kids at home of creating the most beautiful, divine, trusting connection. And that's what I want for you. That's what I want for you. And I have some of you have really challenging kids and it's still possible.